Okay, we're still on 8.6, but we're doing the second part of it. Yes, or yesterday, whenever, when we did uh, the first part of 8.6, what did we learn? We learned the law of what? Law of sines. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn another law, and we're going to learn the law of cosines. This looks really way, way different than what the law of sines looks like. really isn't much the same, all right? But it does look the same as something that we've talked about earlier. And it looks very, at least the beginning of it, looks very, very close uh, to the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So what we're going to do, you know how we always go a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but then I changed it around a little bit. Do you remember that? And I started off saying c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Well, that's the way the law of cosine starts off. So you know half of it already. Really, all you got to do is just memorize the second half of it, and you've got the law of cosines memorized. Now, I've said a bad word, haven't I? I said memorize. <laughs> all right, I know a lot of you guys don't like to memorize things, and it's difficult for me as well to memorize things, but sometimes you just have to. You got to know what they are. So you will have to memorize the law of sines and the law of cosines. All right, I think law of sines you got down pretty good now, don't you? It's not like you got to sit there and memorize everything. Law of cosines, you have to memorize it. So here's the first part. We already have that part down, don't we? But then we're going to stick a little bit more on here. Watch. Minus 2 AB cosine of C. And that's it. It's really not that much more. It's a Pythagorean theorem. You already know that, right? So it's not like you got to sit down and memorize that part of it. All you got to do is basically, yeah, just memorize that part of it, stick it on the end, and you're good to go. Now, this C is a capital C. So what does that represent? The cosine of an angle. And it's the angle, there's a relationship. It's the angle that's what? It's opposite side C. Exactly right. Okay. You could write this down several ways. If you actually look in the book, they write this down three different ways. I'm going to do it, but I memorize one way. I don't memorize all three. All right. Let me just show you what they do. They also can write it like this. A squared equals... Instead of a squared plus b squared, what do you think they're going to put here? Yeah, b squared plus c squared, right? It's just the other two sides, right? Minus 2, what? This was ab, this was ab, so what do you think this is going to be? Yeah, either way, b, c, c, b. Minus the cosine of what? Of a, right, because you're always taking the cosine of the angle that's opposite this one out front. Do you see that? But do you have to sit there and memorize that thing right there? No, you don't, okay? Why did I put minus right here? Um, let's get rid of that. Wait, should we write that one down? Or is that uh, you don't really need to. You don't really need to. All right, so you could write it down like this if you want to. What's another way you could possibly write this? We got C, we got A. Yeah, it's B squared. So what would be here? Right? Right? Minus 2, what? A, C, what? Cosine of B. Good. Listen. So you could write it down both of these ways if you wanted to. I really don't see that there's a big need to memorize these two. I think if you memorize one, you pretty much have them both down, don't you? So I'm going to get rid of those. Just understand that this, that this angle is always the angle that's opposite this side out here that's by itself. If you can, and these are just the other two sides. You got it? Mm -hmm. All right. So um, there's two ways or two reasons that you would use this. If you had a triangle and they gave you a side an angle and a side. If they give you a side and an included angle, that's probably the most common way that we use the law of cosine. I think there's another one. Yep, side, side, side. And there's also another one. Do you understand what I'm saying here? If I give you a triangle and I give you the lengths of two sides, right, and the included angle, if I give you that stuff, then you should be able to find something else on that triangle. All right? If I gave you a triangle with all three sides, I didn't give you any angles at all you should be able to find an angle of this, okay? So on this one, you would actually find the side that's opposite, what do you think? Angle. angle A, right. Right here, you could find an angle that's opposite, what? Any of those sides. Do you agree? All right, I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. Let's do, uh, let's do a little example here, and we'll see how to use that thing. What I would do, in order to memorize the law of cosines, every single problem that you do, I would rewrite the law of cosines. Don't just write it once at the top and then refer back to it. You're not going to memorize it that way. 
right? I would write it every single time. And every time, try to write it without looking somewhere else as a reference. Cover it up. Does that make sense? That's a good way to memorize it, just writing it down a whole bunch of times. All right, so uh, let me draw the example that they have in the book. Remember, these are triangles that are non-right triangles. You remember that, right? That's why we're learning law of sines and law of cosines. If I have a right triangle, I don't need law of sines and law of cosines. I could just use my regular trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent. Am I right, Kenny? <coughs> Kenny, you with me? I know you know this stuff, but let's pay attention. All right. Uh, that kind of looks like a right triangle, though, doesn't it? Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Let's make it look so it's not quite, it doesn't quite look like a right triangle. All right, that looks a little bit better. So watch what they're going to give me here. They're going to give me this little skinny angle, which is 28 degrees. This side right here is 9, and this side is 11, and they're going to ask you to solve for that side right there. Now, remember I wrote down those two things, side angle, side, 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 side. Which one of these is this one? This is side angle, side. You see it? I got two sides in the included angle. Look what I can find. I can find the side that's opposite that angle. Everybody see it? So let's write it down. Remember what I said? We're going to write it down every single time. C squared equals. What's the first part of it? That's easy. A squared plus what? B squared. And then there's the rest of it. There's the new part of it. 2 AB cosine of angle C. Write it down, memorize them. Right? It's not that hard. What's the deal here? What's our C in this situation right here? It's well, it's not the longest side. No, no, no. No, we're not using these. We're not using these as if C was the longest side and A and B were the two shorter sides or anything like that. C just represents the side that's opposite angle C. All right? That's all that it represents. It does not mean that it's the longest side on this triangle. Okay? So, if I know the angle, which I do, I know one angle here, don't I? So, what is the C in this situation? It's the X, isn't it? All right? What is the A and the B in this situation? It's the 9 and the 11. You see it? So, this side is always opposite the angle that they give you. That's very important that you understand that. You got it? All right, so let's write it down with these numbers and these letters instead of A, B, and C. So, what am I going to write first? X squared equals... What's my A and my B? It doesn't really matter which one's which. Okay, you want to go 9 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times what? 9 and 11 again, right? So 9 and 11 here. Well, we'll I'm going to write it all out like this. We'll do the math in a second, okay? And then times what? The cosine, the cosine of 28 degrees. All right? C is always the angle that's opposite that side right there. So if this is, if I call this angle C, this has to be side C. Everybody see it? Right, because that's the only angle I know, right? So that's the only option for angle C right here, because that's the only angle that I know out of the whole triangle. So that has to be angle C. That's this side that's opposite angle C. These two sides are just the A and the B. So that's not so bad, is it? Figuring out how to plug it in? I'm going to stop right there before I go on, okay? Are we okay plugging it into the formula? Yeah. All right, you got to know what these things mean, okay? These things have specific meanings, okay? If this is the angle, that has to be the side that's opposite that angle. That's really the only tricky part about this, okay? It's the part, these are just the other two sides, right? I've already used one of the sides, which in this case was X. I got to figure out what these two sides are. Boom, they, they give them to me. The hardest part about using law of cosines is actually just plugging it into a calculator, now let me show you. You have to practice. I've said this on the last few days. I said you got to practice using your calculator. And then I see like three people with a calculator out in front of them. All right? That's not how it should be. You should have your calculator with you. I mean, that's like bringing your pencil and paper and notebook and book and all that kind of stuff. You should be have you should have your calculator with you every single day because we do a lot of work on calculators now. All right? So you should have it out and make sure you practice. What I want to do is I want to show you something that's going to help you out a little bit. Using parentheses on your calculator. Do you see the parentheses on your calculator? On this calculator, one's here and one's here. You see it? Left and right parentheses. I think they're very helpful when you're doing the law of cosines. Even on the TI-30, what do you, XA. Is that what it is? TI-30XA. Yeah, watch. What I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to put a big old parentheses right here. Now I make it look like a bracket, but that's parentheses on your calculator. Everybody see that? 
made a different color and everything. I think that's very, very important that you use a um, parentheses right here. Okay, that's a big parentheses, and this is a parentheses. Everybody see that? I think it's very, very important. Now, if you're using a TI-30 XA, this is what I would do. I would go, let's do this. Let's practice it. All right, you punch them in. I don't have the calculator on the computer to, to put it up here, all right, but you do this. Who's got a TI-30 TI XA? Who's got that? Raise your hand. That's it? I got three people? There's other people in here that have that calculator, right? Who doesn't have it with you but has one at home or somewhere that they use as a TI-30? Raise your hand. TI-30 XA. TI-30 XA. Why aren't we raising our hands? Anyway. <laughs> if you have one, yeah, but yours is different than your, I know. I, I don't care about the answer. I want to know how to put the numbers into the calculator. That's what I care about right now. So here we go. Are you ready? Punch these numbers in. It's 9 squared. Everybody do this. 9 squared plus 11 squared minus, now what do we put? Parentheses. parentheses. Okay, that's why I put that in a different color. Put a parentheses. Then go 2. Now you'll get a, it'll like clear it out to a 0, won't it? Okay, yep. But it still records that. It's still in the calculator, okay? So you put that parentheses and you hit 2 times 9 times 11. And then you hit times, all right, so you need to hit times again, 28 cosine, put that right parentheses in there, and then hit equals. Then you'll get some big old number, and that's that whole thing right there. What do you get? 27 points, what? 0.18, okay, 18, whatever, blah, 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 right? Okay, so you should get that. Now, what do you do, though, to get x by itself? Square that. Not square it. Square root, right. To get rid of this square, you got to square root all this stuff. So take that number, just hit square root button, and then you should get your answer. About 5.2? I put square root button and So it's 2 times. What calculator are you using? Yeah, okay, what did I say I was going through? I was going through all the steps for the TI-30XA. All right, you got to listen to what, I was, what I'm well, saying. Still hit the square root button. Listen, okay, I'm going through the directions for the TI-30XA. All right, that's what I'm doing. I'll show you how to do the uh, graphing calculator in a second because I have the graphing calculator on the computer, right? So I'll do that in a second. So right now, we're just doing those who have the 30XA. All right, so that's how you do it. That parentheses is very, very helpful. Okay, that's the thing that you have to remember to use is that parentheses right there. Okay. Now watch. If you have a um, if you have a graphing calculator like this one, I'll tell you what, let's scooch this over so I can fit this in here. Watch what we're gonna do here. Now, I'm going to have to practice this because I usually use the 30XA when I'm doing this kind of stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll have to figure this out. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off going 9 squared plus 11 squared okay, minus. Now, I'm going to put a parentheses and I'm going to go 2 times 9 times 11. Now, on this calculator, I don't have to hit times 28 cosine. On this one, I just hit, right, let me see, cosine 28, all right? Then I close, well, I'll close that parenthesis. See, that one closed the 28, but then I need another one to close this one right here. All right, so I close that whole thing. Watch what I do. I hit enter. There's that number, 27 point, right? That was the same number as this, correct? Now, I got to hit what to get that 5.2? square root. So on this calculator, I hit, watch, square root, so second function right there, but then what do I have to put in here for my calculator? Answer. So I hit second function this, close that, and then equals, there it is. Now there is a better way to do it. I think it's more confusing. You could do the square root first and then put everything in, but to tell you the truth, I just kind of like this way a little bit better, all right? So I do all this stuff first. See how I highlighted all that right there? I do all that stuff first, get a number for that, then I take the square root. On the TI-30, square root, one button, boom, you're done. You don't even have to hit equals or anything. On this, you got to hit like four different things. You got to hit second function, square root, and then you got to hit second function, answer, and then you hit enter. That's like five things, 
right? Compared to the TI-30, all you got to do is get that 27.18, and then boom, hit square root, and you're done. It's kind of why I like the uh, 30 better. But know how to do it on the calculator that you're using. Make sense? Okay. The hardest part about this law of cosine stuff is, is as far as solving for the missing side, is using your calculator. You've got to practice. You have got to practice to make sure that you're getting these numbers. All right? Work on it. Do it several times until you are for sure on how to use your calculator and get this number right here. Okay? We got to do another one. We're going to do that. And we have to, um, we want to solve for an angle this time. So this one is side angle side. That was a side angle side, yep. This one, let me just try to draw it the way they do in the book. That goes about like that. That comes down like that. That looks like about like that. All right. Now look, this time we don't know the angle. So that's a little trickier. It takes a couple algebra steps. We didn't really have to do any algebra before at all, did we? We just plugged everything into the formula and just stuck it in a calculator. We didn't really have to do any algebra. On this one, we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra. And at first it's going to look real confusing, but I think, I don't know, I think I make it kind of easy. But we'll see if you agree or not. <laughs> not everybody always agrees. All right, let's do this one. Let's set the thing up. Let's write the form. Remember what I told you to always do? Write the formula down, so let's do that. So it's c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle c. All right, so there it is. I wrote it down again, didn't I? So now let's uh, decide what we're going to do here. Let's put some numbers in for this. Uh, what's our c going to be in this situation? It's going to be the 8. How do, why did you pick 8? So it's opposite, it's opposite the angle they were trying to find. Exactly right. So I'm going to say the C is the 8. So I'm going to go 8 squared. What's the A and the B? 3 and, three and 6. So I'm going to go 3 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times A, which is 3, times 6, right, which is B, times the cosine of what? Angle X, right? Make it big since it's an angle. All right? Now, on this one, you can't just plug all this stuff in and get x by itself. You have to get x by itself first. And look, you got a, right, you got a cosine of x, so you're going to have to do an inverse, aren't you? All right, to get x by itself. But you've got to do two other things. There's all kinds of ways people could do this. Here's what I like to do. I like to do this because you can plug everything into the calculator basically all in one shot. All right? Let's go back in time a little bit. Let's go 5 equals um, 2 plus... 3x. What would you do? You'd subtract a 2 first, wouldn't you? Would you agree? Okay, now let's over here. Now how did you know how to do that? Because you get rid of what's being added first, don't you? Okay, so let's come over here. What's being added to this thing right here? What's, what's the addition that's going on here? Three the 3 and squared and the 6 squared. So over here we subtracted something that was being added, right? So what do you think we're going to do here? We're going to subtract what? 3 squared, and we're going to subtract 6 squared. Now, how do we do that? We go a right? It's going to cancel here and cancel here. But how did I cancel it out? How did it? I subtracted it. So what do I do to this side? Subtract a 3 squared, and then subtract what else? A 6 squared. Isn't that basically the same thing we just did over here? Yeah? We'll put all that stuff in the calculator in a little bit, okay? You don't have to come up with numbers here, okay? I mean, you could, right? But I think it's easier to do it this way, tell you the truth. Everybody okay with that? Now look, what did we do to get x by its, no, we got a 3 here, didn't we? Equals, I tell you what, let me just make this look a little, let's make this a minus, okay? So equals what? Negative 3x. Now, what did we do to get rid of this negative 3? We divided, didn't we? We divided by what? negative 3, not just 3, we divide it by negative 3. So let's come over here. What's being multiplied by this x right here? What's what's going on? Is it just a 3 and a 6? It's not a 2, it's a what? Negative. It's a negative 2, a 3, and a 6, isn't it? So how do you get rid of them? How did we get rid of it here? We divided, didn't we? We divided on both sides. So this is going to cancel out, isn't it? 
So what's going to happen here? If I divide by a negative 2, a 3, and a 6, they're going to cancel out. But what do I have to do to the other side? Divide by a what? A negative 2, a what? A 3, and a 6. It's not so hard, is it? It's really the same steps as we did right here. So that'll cancel, that'll cancel, that'll cancel. What's all that stuff equal? Cosine of x. Now, how do we get x by itself? We've got a cosine in front. Take the what? It's not the negative inverse. It's just the inverse, right? It's just the inverse. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to scooch it over here. So if I get rid of the cosine here, how do I write it here? Cosine to the what? Negative <coughs> first. So look, that's what you're putting into your calculator. Do it all in one shot. I think it's easier. Now, some of you guys may not like this. Some of you guys would go 8 squared is 64, 3 squared is 9, 6 squared is 36. You'd add up those. You'd multiply those. You could do that if you wanted to. I think it's too much of a hassle, to tell you the truth. I like to do it all in one shot. Look, it's only two steps. Well, three, I guess, if you take the inverse. Look, isn't it? Subtract these. That's one step. Are you watching? Three steps. Subtract. Then do what? Divide. That's a second step. And then take the inverse. That's three steps, and you got x by itself. Now, the hard part is put it in the calculator. So let's do it. What we're going to do is this. You guys are paying attention, right? So let's do this stuff first. Now, you've got to be very, very careful with this. I'm going to put another parentheses. Remember the uh, parentheses I put earlier? I'm going to put a parentheses. I'm going to make it a bracket since we've got parentheses all over the place. Put a parentheses here and put a parentheses right there. Everybody got that? So that's something you need to put in that you don't normally see in there. So let's do this. Let's go 8 squared minus 3 squared. Uh, we're squared right there. Minus 6 squared. 6 squared. You got it? You know what we should probably do, though? You might be able to put a division here. I'm not really sure. Let's just try it and see what see if we get the right answer. Yeah, I, I don't think we want a division. Let, we should have done this. And this might not let me do it, but yeah, I'm going to have to start all over again. Let's clear this thing. Let's do this. Let's put a parentheses around this and this. You see I have two parentheses here? So let's do that. I think that might work it out. So let's start off with the parentheses, and then let's go 8 squared minus 3 squared uh, minus 6 squared. Everybody got that? Then close that parentheses. Now we hit divide. See now what it's doing? It's not just taking the 6 square and dividing it. It's taking this whole thing and dividing it. Make sense? Divided by what? The whole bottom. So what do we start off with? A parentheses. And then we go negative 2 times 3 times 6. Close that parentheses. Everybody got that? Then I hit equals. That's that number right there. Now what do I do to that number right there? Take the what? Inverse cosine. So watch, I hit inverse cosine of my answer, right? And then hit equals, and there you go. 121, is that the answer they have in the book? Yep. Let's round, it's C, it's, or it's, it's X, it's angle X. That's 120 what? We round it to the nearest degree, so what would that be? 122. 22, right, because that rounds that up. So 122, so X equals 122 degrees. Now look, I know um, we're running out of time here. I know it seems like it was a lot of steps, but really, what did I say? It was one, two, and then what? Three steps. Subtract three squared and six squared, right? Right there. Divide by negative two, three, and six, right there. Then take the inverse cosine. Boom. Throw it into the calculator. Wouldn't you agree that the calculator is probably the hardest thing out of doing these whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> All right? You got to practice. Practice using the calculators. Okay? Make sure that you know what you can get away with. Because sometimes you can get away without using some of these parentheses. I like to keep it safe. I like to stay safe and not just guess what the calculator actually knows. I like to tell the calculator what it needs to put in. So I like to put the parentheses here and here. Then it works out nice and pretty. And there you go. That's it. That's the law of cosines. Yes. We have to do 9 through whatever. Time. Yeah, you're going to do 9 through the end, whatever it is. Okay, so what is it? Or can we, can we wait and go over this a little bit more tomorrow? Nope. We went over it. I've gone over everything I need to go over it. It's on It's on YouTube. Go on YouTube. Watch it two or three times if you need to. All right? And um, 
or just once. Whatever. What is it? Nine to what? Sixteen. Is that what it is? Okay. So that's the worksheet. Section eight six. All right. So that's what's due tomorrow. Enjoy that.